Good evening, I'm Kyle Clark. And I'm Jennifer Meckles. A mother in Denver is dedicating herself to keeping kids safe after her four-year-old daughter was hit and killed crossing the street. Nine News reporter Rhea Jha joins us now to talk about this mother's mission. Rhea? Right, we spoke at an event at Lincoln Elementary, the school her daughter would have attended and where her older kids go now. It was an event for bike safety where she had people sign a poster that said, watch for us, which will hang outside the school. Prepped with homemade signs and treats. You know, if this sign survives the wind, I'll be shocked. Gina Gancheva set up a stand at Lincoln Elementary School for the annual bike rodeo. Come over and get some ice cream, get some lemonade and then pledge to support pedestrian safety in our neighborhood. Every year, kids bring their bikes to ride through courses and play games while learning about safety. These purple ribbons are actually for Gracie. Her, her birth month is June. Usually, Gina's four-year-old daughter, Gracie, would be among them. We come to the bike rodeo every year, but I think this year, uh, because of everything we've been through as a family, I think our commitment um, has changed a little bit more. On a family trip to Boston in March, Gracie was hit and killed by a pickup truck while crossing the street. Yeah, it's um, 52 days ago. So I do count every day. The worst moment of my entire life, you know, just it happened so quickly and the repercussions of that split second are done. Now Gina channels her grief into action. I don't know what else to do but to be out continuing to push her spirit, continuing to talk about her and to talk about causes in her name. And again, make sure that this doesn't happen to any other child or person just by crossing the street. Hi, would you like to sign our pledge? Gina says she does this work with Gracie's memory in mind. She would peek her head around the corner, around the door and smile at me. And she had a huge, beautiful smile and she would just look at me and then she grabbed my hand and then she'd say, I love you, mama. So that no one else is left to their memories. What if she just peeked around a door again one day and I saw her, you know, like what would that feel like? And you can just imagine yourself grabbing her and never letting her go. As you just saw, Gracie always had the biggest smile on her face. Gina now hopes to create a program for or service in her name that does exactly that, bringing happiness to other children in Gracie's memory. In the studio, Rhea Cha, Nine News. Cyclists in Colorado Springs held the city's first ever Ride of Silence today. A worldwide event happens every May 15th, raising awareness about cyclists who've been injured or killed on public roads. Colorado law requires drivers to give cyclists three feet between the bike and the car. A man who hit four first responders while driving drunk last December has now pleaded guilty. Benjamin Winters was driving on I-76 near Sable in Commerce City when he crashed into two Commerce City police officers and two South Adams County firefighters on the side of the interstate. Everybody survived that crash, but one officer is still off duty recovering six months later. Today, Winters pleaded guilty to two vehicular assault charges and assault on a first responder. He'll be sentenced in August. Video of that crash was also released today. These are some still images from police body camera at the scene. They capture the chaos of the collision when Winner's car hit those first responders. Obviously, it's pretty hard to see here. It's moved very quickly through the scene, so it's hard to see on video as well. But if you'd like to watch the whole video, we do have it on our website. We want to warn you, it can be difficult to watch. We're going to post it there because it shows the dangers first responders face when they're working on the side of busy roads. A second teenager accused of killing a woman by throwing a rock at her car is now taking a plea deal. He was supposed to go to trial this summer for the death of 20-year-old Alexa Bartel. But now Nicholas Gorolchik, the man on the left here in this three photos, is facing 35 to 72 years in prison. In court today, Gorolchik pleaded guilty to three charges, including second-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder. On the night Bartel died, prosecutors say the three teenagers threw rocks out of a moving truck targeting other drivers. Karolchik admitted in court that he handed Joseph Koenig a rock and Koenig threw the rock in Bartel's car. Joseph Koenig's now the only one still scheduled to go on trial, and the other two teenagers have agreed to testify against him. Jurors are now deciding whether to convict a man accused of killing four people, then taking off to Mexico for months. Some of the victims, including his ex-girlfriend, filed for protection orders against him just days before that shooting. Prosecutors say back in October of 2022, Joseph Castorena's ex was trying to leave him. He came to a house in Aurora to call members of her family. Prosecutors say Castorena tried to shoot and kill his ex-girlfriend. She ultimately wasn't hurt. But three of the victims who died were related to her, and the fourth person killed lived on the property. The defense argued Castorena was acting in self-defense. 
His brother and his cousin already pled guilty this year after investigators say they helped him escape arrest. Authorities found Castorena months after that shooting in Mexico. Jury will continue deliberations tomorrow morning. One person's hurt tonight after a situation in Arapahoe County where sheriff's deputies fired their guns. At this point, they're not being very forthcoming about just what happened. The incident was a bit before 5 o'clock tonight in a neighborhood off South Himalaya Street, south of East Quincy. The Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office says its deputies were involved in a shooting and one person was taken to the hospital. They would not tell us if deputies were the ones who shot the person. They also would not share any information about what led up to the shooting. We're continuing to ask questions and we'll keep you updated. Southern Colorado got some serious hail today. Here's some video from meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen. He's about 10 miles south of Peyton, east of Colorado Springs. We stayed dry in the Denver metro area up here, but he got some action down there, Lauren. Well, earlier we stayed dry in the Denver metro area. We're seeing some storms now, depending on where you are. We saw some pretty heavy rainfall just south of Denver, but you can see all of this rain pushing into downtown Denver. So depending on where you are, you can look outside for either some light uh, rainfall or some areas with some heavier rainfall like Broomfield. We saw some heavy rainfall and storms pushed through Highlands Ranch into Centennial. Those are starting to weekend. So we do still have some rain left for the metro area. That's going to move out quickly. Nothing severe expected. Where we were watching for possible severe weather was going to be to the south and southeast where all of these storms are really starting to wind down and the good news is all of this will clear out as we move through the overnight hours and then tomorrow we're going to look for some warm weather for our Thursday getting even warmer for our weekend. I'll have details on all of that in my full seven day forecast just ahead. DPS has struggled for years with a lack of air conditioning in some of its schools. Nine News reporter Rachel Krause is joining us in the studio tonight. The district finally has a plan to finish some of the work they've started. Yeah, dozens of schools still rely on portable cooling devices and fans, even heat days. So Denver Public Schools is proposing a plan that would help pay for air conditioning and cooling upgrades for the 30 schools that are left. Uh, this, these are the locations where we're going to be installing air conditioning, proposing air conditioning in the 2024 bond. The winds of change are blowing through DPS. <laughs> Plans for a new bond measure are moving quickly through the Community Planning Advisory Committee. We made a recommendation of $975 million to the committee, and they've been working on this since January. Melissa Rosales is a DPS senior program manager and CPAC member. She says one big piece of the plan is getting AC into all schools. This will actually be the remaining amount of schools. So there's 30 schools in this package to receive air conditioning. The ability to keep all classrooms cool, a massive weight off the district's shoulders. It is, it is, absolutely. The schools in blue uh, are the schools that we've identified on the first uh, slide that will be climate conscious. Among the committee's 60 members is East High Junior Noah Schurz. As a student, I am a big part of the district. The district functions for me and a lot of my friends and a lot of other students and I just really wanted to make sure that we that I was in the room to really like make those not make those decisions but really work on the issues that students really care about. With nearly a billion dollar investment in the district at stake. As you can see we're talking about adding cooling, electrified heat, uh, geothermal, uh, investigations. Sure says making sure students and sustainability are at the center of the plan. And that was really like something that I was able to bring in was kind of my perspective as a student on all of that. DPS says the price tag for these improvements is high, but they stress the bond won't increase taxes for voters. And if approved, work will start quickly with the first round of schools getting AC installed next summer. And I think that it improves the learning envir environments for all of our students. CPAC will propose their plan to the school board next month. The board is expected to vote on the bond in August, and if approved, it would then go to before voters in the fall. Rachel Krause, 9 News.